Okay, so I think um, uh, I think we might have a couple of um, hosts for this discussion. Um, still admitting people. Okay, so we're discussing uh, biological sequestration, uh, the proposal for the um, breakout room was nature-based carbon drawdown, including bamboo reforestation, funding, carbon offset, et cetera. So um, let's see, we have Troy Carter who had proposed this session. Um, Troy, do you want to um, moderate the session? Do you have... Um, I'm happy to moderate. It looks like we okay. have maybe 12, 13 people or something, um, uh, unless you want to, unless you have a specific idea. Uh, you're, you can be the leader. I can also add some things as well. If you want to. Great. So maybe let's let's just wait like one more minute while people people come in. Um, and I think my my impulse for this session right now is to is to take a very quick round of everyone, um, see if there are you know a minute per person something around there just to see uh, if there are projects in the field that are that are interesting to mention. Um, and then maybe we just go on from there if there are any deeper topics we want to actually get into discussion about. Um, uh, thanks, Troy, and I did make it to the meeting, so great to be here. And so I think we can probably just do this um, as people can like unmute uh, without raising their hand. Uh, or they, may, they can like physically raise their hand, but not go through the, the Zoom raise hand process. Um, so if someone just wants to start and uh, you know do a little intro for themselves personally, or an intro for whatever project they're working on or want to work on, um, and just take let's say a minute, a minute per person, and um, and if there's more that needs to be said afterward, we can just put that in the longer discussion after maybe 20 minutes or so. So I'd say, you know, physically raise your hand. It looks like Susan, maybe you go first and then Patrick. I am Susan Fancy from the Global CO2 Initiative at the University of Michigan. Thanks so much for proposing this session. So we work on uh, carbon capture and utilization and um, we are very interested in the usage of plants uh, as fibers for uh, cementitious materials for concrete. So the idea is to combine both uh, CO2 uh, curing into concrete and then also the plant fibers to really uh, accelerate the amount of carbon sequestration that can handle in the material. So we're, we've got a wonderful uh, team working on the technical side. We're not strong in policy. And so what's um, not clear to us is how can we drive that? You know, how, you know, do you drive that? I mean, how does that work? I mean, our motto is carbon negative dollar positive. So we want the economics to work without carbon, you know, without policy support. But in this case, I don't know, it's just not clear. So I'll be quiet. <laughs> yeah, and maybe, maybe actually I have, a, I have another request. Is there someone who would like to take notes for this session? Basically um, just one line, someone's name, yeah, it looks like uh, looks like Candace. Maybe you could take notes. That would be great, just so we can after. Um, and and Troy, Troy, too. These uh, to let yeah. everyone know in, if you didn't hear, we are actually recording all these sessions as well. Great, great. Um, um, yeah, I'm building master plan communities in Austin that are about the, the size of 1,280 homes, 3,000 people, and we're putting 75% of the land, as you can see in that picture, in the carbon sequestration. Uh, like the commons. And so it's regenerative agriculture. So how do we create communities that are off grid, 10% uh, of the land and water so that they're sovereign for food. And we know as farmers how to scale down the processing. So for example, the processing plants you're hearing about now, we build that into the community with an on-site compost facility. So it's all closed economy or uh, circular. And we're financing a lot of that infrastructure with public bonds. And the carbon credits basically go free to the residents. And in a larger project, about 960 acres with an 80-acre village, we can generate uh, carbon-positive lifestyles for a household of two people. Okay. 
And maybe one more comment, Jack, you can go next. Um, if there's some, if there's like a specific request or like, you know, maybe ending your share with a question or something, something that you would like the rest of this group to know. So it's not just, hey, I'm sharing my project, but just something where other people have a point to engage on as well. So maybe Patrick, if you have a quick question for the group on a way to support. And Carbon sequestration, in particular, intensive silvo pasture is a key technology that we're not getting enough information on. Uh, it's in drawdown, but it's really hard to find more places that can help uh, show demonstration projects or you know, dem get that technology moving. Cool, thanks Patrick. Nate, Jack and Kate. Uh, am I on? <laughs> yes. Um, on. Uh, yeah, I'm Jack Sullivan. I'm the chairman and founder of Red Carbon which sequesters and uses carbon simultaneously. So uh, we think the financial model will be a little stronger and potentially viable. Um, we're trying to scale rapidly and we think the technology does scale rapidly. And the reason I wanted to attend this session is I'm very interested in determining from a strategic standpoint, which is the better way to go given the time constraints we have as a species. Um, one, rely on nature and earth systems to solve our climate change problem and how long that will take to scale versus leveraging our industrial infrastructure globally on solutions and how long it'll take that to scale. And just thinking about this from a very large strategic standpoint, because I'm worried we're running out of time. And if everybody approaches this from a standpoint of uh, you know, it's another business opportunity. Here's my idea, or there's my idea, or there's my idea. There's, there's no cohesive vision and effort and push towards a common vision. We're, we're running out of time with piecemeal answers. We got to all get behind a couple of strategic things that we know will work. So I just want to flush out whether or not the natural or the man-made is the, the better strategic choice. Okay, I'm Kate Levy. I'm a chemist and material scientist. I'm currently um, working at Impossible Foods, so using, uh, I guess, sort of agriculture to pull carbon from the air. But before this, I worked at Georgia Pacific making paper and wood products and basically upcycling wood to be more useful and um, be able to be used in a wider variety of applications. So. I'm really interested in the carbon capture and utilization space in uh, places where we can use biology to do the first step of pulling the carbon from the air. But then like as a chemistry material scientist, what can I do after that to make that into durable goods that are used for a wide variety of applications? Um, and I'm interested in finding companies in this space that I could possibly uh, work in R&D as one of these companies. Great. Kate and I just had a chat yesterday about this. Okay, Lori, you're on. Hi, everybody. I'm Lori Muzzy. I'm um, a recent graduate of a master's program, uh, but I'm a soil scientist and I'm interested in working on policy, um, increasing soil carbon. So using whatever waste we can to increase soil carbon and uh, that's probably just composting, but <laughs> I want to figure out how to compost on large scale. So I'm mostly here to see what people need done. And uh, I'm interested to hear everybody's challenges. Thank you. Thanks, Laurie. Anyone else that has a, has a hand up or, or you can just unmute yourself and, and pop as well. Uh, yeah, I am. I'm, uh... James McGreen, I'm a director of the Climate Center in Santa Rosa, and I've been working on climate issues for a long, long time, uh, and uh, particularly lately interested in, in climate policy uh, as a way of uh, uh, affording all the things that need to be done at the speed and scale necessary to meet the problem. That's the, that's the situation that we're faced with now is that there's, there's, uh, we're running out of time to be able to make the, the needed changes in it. It's actually uh, a thermodynamic, you know, physical problem that uh, the, um, you know, we, we have to really pay attention to our, our consumption, but, al but also our, our uh, 
rapid restoration. And with carbon, um, carbon technologies are actually just re straightly rewarding carbon mitigation um, in, in all of its ways uh, is the, uh, the policy that, that uh, uh, a group I work with advocates and it's, a, it's called global um, 4c.org. And um, um, it's a central bank policy uh, kind of similar to green quantitative easing for where trillions of dollars come from uh, can be directly um, um, appropriated to the service of carbon mitigation. Now would fund all these great projects, which there's there's so many of them, and uh, um, they would um, they would compete on the basis of their effectiveness. So I think that's a a hopeful and uh, and and beautiful thing, but it does require um, participation of a uh, uh, of the banks, you know, um, central banks. I'm just going to chime in here real quick, uh, just for new people that have joined in. We're basically just doing a one minute per person round, you know, with your name, what you're working on, and then also a particular like point of collaboration, um, whether it's a request for funding or a request for collaboration, a shout out to one of the other people in the group saying, hey, I want to work with you. You sound great. Um, so just a way for other people in the room to engage. And with the general intention for the group is that, um, one, we can be heard in what we're doing or what we want, but also that other people can sort of self-identify where there's opportunities for collaboration. And we're just unmuting ourselves and popping or uh, physically raising our hands. And whoever wants to go. Hi, this is Ivan, uh, based in the Bay Area in San Francisco. Nice to speak with everybody today. I am uh, currently researching opportunities in forestry and restoration management, making our existing forests resilient to wildfire and climate change, and making sure that the trees we already have don't go up in smoke in catastrophic forest fires. And uh, I've been digging on this for about four months now, and I'm starting to get to the point where I have some ideas. Would love to talk to anybody who is interested in that. Uh, some of the things I'm looking at is biochar, uh, mass timber products, cross-laminated timber, mass plywood. And, um, you know, I've been focused on California, but I'm starting to learn about some of the challenges that are structural in the state um, that might make it difficult. But uh, um, very interested in, in connecting with anybody else here who has uh, uh, anything that they'd like to, to work with on that. On those topics yeah so just on that point super encouraged like maybe in the chat we just shout out to people that we want to want to follow up with um, perhaps, hi. Thanks, Evan. hi i hope you guys can hear me i'm curia um so yeah i'm a mechanical engineer uh i my background is is in large-scale industrial like oil and gas applications but then lately i've shifted more and more into cleaner technologies and I'm particularly interested in um, the ability to scale up promising small technologies. For example, I see a lot of um, developments in uh, anaerobic biodigestive technologies. And there, there, there you know, there's, there's, there's an interface with natural processes to uh, break down the biomass. But I suppose as we scale up, I'm also interested in yeah, closing that loop of you know, bringing our um, carbon load in the atmosphere down. And uh, I'll be happy to collaborate or yeah, learn more from people, whether it's in forestry, whether it's even in uh, the utility sector, for example, um, uh, municipalities uh, are looking at yeah, carbon drawdown, but Sorry, oh, we lost you for a second. Can you just oh, okay. the last like 15 seconds of what you said? Yes. Yeah, so I was just saying, I was just describing various sectors that are u utilizing uh, natural processes like anaerobic biodigestion to produce electricity. So this is, a, this is an interesting way to shift away from, for example, fossil fuel based uh, uh, power generation. And I'm interested to learn more from uh, people who are specialized in these national natural processes on how, um, yeah, we can scale up. I appreciate learn more from others. Great. Looks like Jack has something. 
Yeah, hey, I, I wanted to ask you a question, Troy, if everybody's intros sure. are over, um, just to get a conversation started, going back to the strategic sure. question. Um, what do you think? Uh, is relying on our natural systems, given the deterioration in our planet is already happening, is the risk higher doing that, or is it? I'm just gonna raise my hand. I have the solution to the question. No. Okay, go, um, go, go. I want to hear. No, no, no. I think that's why. I think that's why we're all in conversation. Yeah, um, take, take maybe, over. Maybe I'll just take my minute um, and say um, I'm working on a project called Rhizome. It's a uh, bamboo. Uh, carbon sequestration project. We plant bamboo and then we turn it into engineered bamboo lumber. Um, and that's being used for all sorts of structural and aesthetic applications. Turns out bamboo uh, grows super fast. We use a species called Dendrocalamus asper mostly. Um, and it's great on many levels and probably a pretty strictly good business. Um, so if you're interested in bamboo um, or mass timber or engineered wood, um, or other sort of like ways to pay for um, large scale reforestation. Um, uh, for me, I think this is one of the most scalable technologies that we have. Um, I don't have a good answer to your question. For us, it's a combination like plants are super efficient and in, uh, in particular bamboo at drawing and you know, balancing uh, atmospheric carbon dioxide. Um, and there has to be a sort of manufacturing process to actually either stick it in the ground or stick it in buildings. And uh, maybe a request is that one, um, we're always raising money. Um, if you have uh, either $5 million or $5 million in your bank that you want to give us at the moment, we'll take it. Um, and we're also looking for, I would say, like uh, technical collaborators, um, on the engineered wood side, and then probably later this year, um, just a build out of the entire team, meaning designers, developers. Um, also, if you have contacts to strategic partners in construction, lumber, or um, sort of like, or actually, or reforestation groups or conservation groups that want to like co plant biodiverse species along with our bamboo plantings. And that's my, that's my minute. Uh, Troy, if people give you $5 million, will they get a bunch of money back or is that a nonprofit donation? They'll, they'll get way more money back than they give us. Yes. Way more. Um, so I joined, course, Lee, yeah. my apologies. What are we doing for intros? Right. So one minute per person, name what you're working on or what you want to work on. Um, and it could be some information about could be some information about the project and then a point of collaboration, um, how you could potentially engage with other people uh, in this room or how you would need help. Awesome. Hi, I'm Josh. I have a background as a software engineer. I used to work at Google on search. I've done lots of big data, a little bit of machine learning type things. Uh, I spent the last 10 years failing at entrepreneurship, working on agriculture tech. Um, and trying to get really into the carbon sequestration side of regenerative agriculture. I get super excited about agricultural robots, um, remote sensing ways of, of verifying that carbon has been sequestered in soil. Um, sounds like a few of us have similar interests on these things. Um, let's see. Other points of collaboration, I might be available to do contract work for people who are doing these kinds of processing of satellite data or other kinds of big data thing, data plays. Um, and at some point I'd love to found a company to do soil carbon verification um, with remote sensing or some other automated way. Nice. Thanks, Josh. Yeah. And Thanks. basically, we're also exchanging sort of like private messages over chat uh, if there's like an opportunity. Oh, can I add one thing? Go one thing it. I'm most excited about is that there are papers that claim, and not everyone believes them, that regenerative agriculture, especially cows, can sequester 157 parts per million CO2 over the next 80 years. Cool. Awesome. Go for it, Kelly. 
Okay, um, I just joined. Uh, nice to see all of your faces. Um, also, I just popped into a couple of the open space rooms and they're all really cool. <laughs> uh, so I wear a couple different hats and um, I, I started a company called Ecozoic Resources and we create climate positive toilets um, that create a liquid fertilizer that uh, we have hopes will be able to sequester soil carbon when it's used at scale. Um, right now we have uh, kind of slowed our efforts in the wake of COVID, um, but are excited to get back into the market on that probably later in the year or in 2021. Um, in other nature-based carbon solution worlds, I also started Project Vesta, which is um, enhanced coastal weathering using this rock olivine uh, to sequester carbon dioxide. So basically taking nature's process of um, the carbonate silicate cycle and speeding it up dramatically um, so that we can mimic what Earth has done, which is keeping 99.9% .9 of carbon in rocks um, and do that much faster and at scale. Um, so curious at, uh, around many lenses of nature-based carbon solutions and definitely of the mindset that, um, that it is something that we all need to be leaning into a lot more. Um, and was in the um, business models track today and for anyone who wasn't there, Diego of Pachama was speaking there and um, just wanna like give him big claps for the work that he is doing and the way that he's framing uh, the importance of nature-based uh, climate solutions. Nice. Okay, any other hands or just unmute yourself and, uh, and feel okay. free to- I'll do a quick one, uh, oh. Troy. Uh, hi, this is David. I, this will be quick because Troy and I work together, so you-, you And David's in a gorgeous it. bamboo house at the moment, if you can't tell. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, that he built. Yeah, that's been my passion for the last 25 years. And um, what really got me going in 09 was I put together a paper on uh, using bamboo for carbon sequestration. And I thought somebody would, I presented it and thought somebody would pick it up. Well, I realize it's us. So we're picking it up and uh, putting it in operation uh, through Rhizome. Um, as Troy said, we are looking for funding. Uh, we're also looking for projects to place the material because we're going to be having a lot of uh, building material that does need projects to go into. Um, so, you know, if you or your circle have upcoming green uh, construction projects, we'd love to be a part of that. All right. Thanks, David. Thank you. Hey y'all, uh, my name is John. I'm a designer and developer. Um, so I previously been involved with carbon pricing advocacy, um, co-founding an organization called Our Climate, which um, advocates for carbon pricing legislation around the country. Um, and lately I've been working um, just as a software engineer and designer and I'm looking for different opportunities to, to get involved with this. I'm especially interested in bio biological based solutions. I think there's like the ability to enhance conservation, for example, as well as um, carbon capture. So yeah, that's why I'm in this session. Great. Uh, my name is uh, Mark O'Brien. I'm an, also a designer here. Um, I'm a huge fan of bamboo. A couple of years ago, back in 2011, I spearheaded a, a project, a bike project that uh, put a lot of attention on the sustainable bamboo farming uh, initiative in the South and Alabama specifically. And we worked with Marsha Folsom, the former First Lady of Alabama, uh, to put attention on her initiative called Alabamboo. And uh, me and some friends built bikes out of bamboo and rode them from Alabama to San Francisco to raise awareness. Uh, I still ride that bike every day. Um, check it out at ridealabamboo.com. Um, I run a creative studio called The Determine. Uh, we want to support you all with the work that you're doing. So we offer everything from branding to messaging to marketing, a lot of innovation strategy work as well. And just a quick plug, uh, John, uh, who just spoke, or any other designers out there, um, we, I highly encourage you all to join climatedesigners.org. It's an initiative from The Determine. Uh, we want to empower designers who are taking climate action and giving them the resources, tools, and uh, communities 
uh, need it for them to uh, to help uh, uh, entrepreneurs and and founders of climate based solutions. Um, hi, I'm Diana. So I'm based in um, Toronto, Canada, and I have a background in um, chemistry and carbon management. So it's lovely to hear everyone's ideas. I have no idea if I'm are that amazing. And so and I founded a company called the Applied Native Emission Center. So basically, I've noticed um, a lot of companies, um, they have a 2030 or 20. Um, 15 net zero goal, but then they have they don't know how to achieve it, and then they're really excited to collaborate collaborate with you know a startup like you guys to kind of achieve their uh, mitigation goals. So this is where I come in. So I basically connect the um, you know the startups with these um, companies, and I will post my LinkedIn and information in the chat. Thank you. Yeah. We got a few more I have a still. Question. Go on, Jack. Yeah. For the bamboo folks, um, what kind of capture do you guys get? Um, describe the process of, of bamboo and how it takes carbon out of the air and how much and how massive it could be and just. It's, a, it's one for us, I just 10 seconds. It's a lot. It's probably 10 times, the, at least the species we're using is about 10 times as much as sort of the next level um, sort of non-coppiced tree, um, which is really big. Uh, we think we could probably draw down 10 gigatons by 2050 in cumulative um, based on our expected planting and available uh, land areas that we've talked with. And um, we have a bunch of papers about this. I can send you links. Please do. I'd ask a brief follow-up question. Go for it. Could you um, quantify the carbon drawdown in terms of like per hectare per year? Yeah, I would say we're still, I mean, we're pioneering the VCS method. Like for us, we're pioneering the VCS methodology to actually determine that number super properly. So I don't want to quote something a little bit off, um, but it's, it's large. Um, let's say a clump of bamboo uh, at its max rate can do about a ton of CO2 per year. And we've seen plantings about 200 clumps per hectare. Um, so this, is, this might seem a little bit off the charts, but when VCS tells us that it's really true, uh, we'll let you know. So give me a call in three weeks. Yeah, okay. That, yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear the answer. Um, I've been looking at projects that are using elephant grass and they draw down about 140 tons per year per hectare. So or it does, I should say. Yeah, um, yeah so it's interesting. Bamboo is very, um, as a building material, it's very interesting. And uh, do you know what the, uh, how long the growth cycle is? Like how long does it take to grow maturity? I mean, every species of bamboo is different. Dendrocalamus asper in the high rainfall areas that we've been uh, using it in, so in Mindanao in the Philippines and in other areas, um, it's about a seven year from planting to maturity. We harvest about a third of the clump every year. Um, and uh, yeah, it goes, right. goes on for 80 years or so. Thank you. Who's next? Just, you can just um, pop and raise your hand. This is Ryan Lochtenberg from Carbon Farms International. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Okay, uh, great. Um, yeah, situated in British Columbia with operations in Nicaragua currently. Um, our goal is to find pasture land and convert it into um, forest, reforestation, um, and as well as um, in order to avoid uh, taking food away from the world's food supply, we ensure that um, we grow a sufficient number of perennial uh, fruit trees to offset any calories removed uh, by the cattle that may have been in there uh, previously. 
Um, but yeah, we see um, pasture land, um, literally, I think there's 3 billion hectares of pasture land that, you know, if we just um, start eating more efficiently uh, with how we obtain our calories per uh, hectare of land, um, we'll free up plenty of land, uh, more than enough to uh, draw down the amount of carbon we need uh, to get our numbers back down to 350. So, um, yeah, so if, if there's people, uh, businesses or um, other groups that are looking to convert, uh, or I should say are interested in participating in allowing us to manage uh, the conversion of pasture land into um, agroforestry. That's basically what we help businesses and individuals do. So, uh, yeah, but thanks everyone for uh, also doing their part in um, drawing down carbon. It's really important. Nice, thanks Ryan. You know, I should do a quick clarifier that, uh, you know, the, I have another company called Bamboo Living that uses the bamboo poles themselves. What Troy and I are working on is dimensional lumber materials made out of uh, bamboo that really the goal is to replace wood, steel, and concrete in uh, construction. Nice. Anyone left that hasn't had the opportunity to uh, share a bit so far? See Jenny. I can go very quickly. Um, hi, uh, I'm Jenny Mills. I'm a, I'm a geochemist. I'm just finishing up my PhD at Berkeley, so also centered in the Bay Area. Um, and so I'm actually I'm a carbonate specialist. Uh, so I am particularly interested in a lot of the enhanced weathering work, um, but I also do a lot of soil carbon work. Um, and kind of ecosystem carbon cycling more broadly. So I'm just very excited to uh, um, kind of be here today and hear how people are putting these things into practice in the real world uh, and kind of broadly looking for opportunities in this space. Cool, thanks Jenny. Looks like Candace, you've got your hand up. Yes, um, so I'm Candace, I just graduated from University of Michigan actually, so I'll reach out to you, Susan. Um, but from the biostatistics program, and, and I have a background in policy and business, so I'm trying to like put together a tech and business background, probably be on the climate side of the climate finance, sorry, the finance side of climate change. Um, and I don't know exactly what I'm doing in what I'll be doing in a few months, but I'm just here to sort of learn and explore. So that's me. Hi. Um, I'll just jump in. I, I'm also a recent or soon to be graduate. Of my master's degree is in industrial design. Um, my background uh, is as a professional designer and other sort of like typography. And so I went from graphic to 3D and um, I'm actually moving into systems transition design. So um, my area of focus for my thesis has been uh, around land use and how that can be both ecologically regenerative and also socially and economically regenerative. So focusing on urban drawdown um, in situations where the co-benefits are weighed um, equal to or even above the um, financial return or um, the carbon sequestration and emissions potential. Um, and so trying to communicate um, that equivalence is really interesting to me, um, making sequestration an equitable practice through and through. Um, so super interested in expanding that methodology out towards um, you know, so-called non-biological uh, ways of carbon capture. And so I'd love to hear um, from any companies thinking about uh, that part of their process as well. Um, and then also uh, the, you know, traditional designer in me uh, will never let go of the beauty of products and good, you know, graphics. So happy to help out and in this ways as well. If anyone has any last minute plugs, requests, things that didn't get said, you can chime in until everyone's gone. Just a thought that I love the hippie energy in here. Thanks guys. <laughs> Troy, it just occurred to me that BFI has a program that's got an accelerator and connections and funding that might be useful for you guys if you don't know about it already. Uh, nope, send me a link. Okay.